different. We come to the fourth week in our series, Faith and Work, and we've been preaching about God's view and in terms of scripture, what it says. But today I thought, let's invite three great people to come and speak into the practicality of living this out in their workplaces. And so as we talk about faith and work, I want us to remember whether it's paid, unpaid, volunteer, wherever we find ourselves, at home, in an office, at school, whatever that looks like, what can we learn from today? And so these wonderful three people joining me here, we have Emily Fawcett, Keith Morton and Kelly Bunyan. Put your hands together and welcome these guys. Now, these three wonderful humans are in different spaces, a diverse range of places where they work, but I'm wanting to encourage you guys. It's not like they're sitting here with perfection. They've nailed it and they've made it and they do everything brilliantly and perfectly for the Lord Jesus. They are three exceptional human beings, but they're also really real. And so my heart is today as we listen and learn from them, there's things that we can apply whatever space we find ourselves in. So let's find out a little bit more about who you are. Em, let's start with you down the end. What do you do for work? What do you love about your work? So I work as a speech pathologist in schools. I work for Department for Education. So we go to public schools and preschools and work with um, teachers, SSOs, parents, um, the children, which range, who range from about four or three to four to about 12, a little bit in the high school space as well. Um, yeah, I love making connections with the children and helping them make progress. Great, nice. Okay, Keith, what does your week look like? What do you do for work? What do you love? So we run a small business. Um, essentially, we work in the manufacturing software space. So we uh, might put the controls on a machine that packages put tissues into tissue boxes, for life, for, for, so you understand that. And the second part of the business is we offer uh, laser cutting, bending and fabrication, that they, they sort of align to each other. Um, and we're trying to, try to maintain diversity, we're trying to maintain differences in the business. Um, what I love about the job is I like to do clever stuff, uh, thinking outside the box, and like to see the customers' reactions to that. It sounds very clever and totally above my pay grade. And I want to say Keith and his work have also made the poles that our cameras sit on here. Like it's totally, I can't manage how you do this. But thank you because you make skills that do wonderful things and we can be benefited from that. So thanks. Kelly, what does work look like for you? What do you do? What do you love? Um, I'm the principal of a Catholic college. Ooh, am I on? Oh, there we go. I'm the principal of a Catholic college in Devon Park. Um, and we're a learning community for students aged 17 to 24 years old. And what I love about it is that I love working with young people because their energy is really infectious. Nice. So different spaces and places, but all using your skills. We've been sitting in this idea of faith and work and this whole idea that our faith is part of who we are and what we do. So I want to ask you guys, what does living your faith in the workplace look like? What does it look like to kind of see those things come together. Kel, I want to start with you. What does living your faith in your workplace look like? Um, for me, it looks like a thousand little things. Um, so our school is a faith-based organisation, so we can, we can do things really openly. We can say prayers in meetings and have grace before meals with the students and talk about Jesus and love, and that's, that's really important. But for me, it's about the showing, the showing the love, um, asking students how they are and, and caring about the answer or showing grace where you actually don't hold the grudge, you start again the next day, um, and showing mercy when staff and students are affected by hardship. So it's in the little things. I really like that phrase, it's a thousand little things. I think sometimes when we think about living our faith in the workplace, it might be one big thing we think about, but there's actually value in a thousand little things and having integrity and being consistent in the small things. Thanks, Kel. Keith, what does living faith in the workplace look like for you? Uh, yeah, I guess the, the business has been running since 2010, but in 2019 I attended uh, a, a seminar run by a Christian business leader in, from Queensland. At the end of that seminar, the business had pretty much turned on its head. Instead of being my business, it became God's business and I was just the driver. Um, the term they use these days is a kingdom business. And the, the difference that made is that the whole purpose for the business is actually to fund kingdom projects. And what that looks like for us is to fund child and youth injustice causes, um, various those, IJF, um, other organisations, uh, and we love doing that. Um, so it's changed the focus on everything we do because that's the goal. It's no longer about me and about Annette and about our family. It's actually about this business that belongs to God. And we see his fingerprint all the time. 
um, in the tough times, in the good times, we see his fingerprint. And when we think he's not there, because there's been those moments, I shout and scream and say, where are you in this? And he shows his fingerprint. It was just amazing. I love that, that you've been able to kind of reframe in your mind it's God's business, not yours. And I think for those of us maybe in a place of influence or authority, what does it look like to ask that question of who's, who's is this workplace? It's a brilliant way to consider it. And even how you've used resources then that you receive from that profit, how can you then see that go into God's kingdom and, and stand up for people using everything for him? It's great. M, living faith in the workplace. What does that look like for you? Yeah, I think um, it's what I've been learning is about seeing where God is already at work um, in my workplace and amongst my team and the schools I go into. Um, so rather than having to sort of create or manufacture an opportunity to talk about faith or to be the perfect Christian and say the right things at the right time, um, it's more just about... Um, you know, we've got a job, we need to do the things we need to do, but um, we can invite God into the situations that, um, yeah, he's He's a relational God and so we can build relationships with people and um, by inviting him into meetings that I'm in or um, with teachers and things or um, the work I do with students, it just helps me to be present and in the moment rather than rushing or thinking about what I need to do next. Um, so that's really helped to just be more mindful, I guess, of where God is already at work in my workplace. Thanks for that, Em. It reminds me of what Mark shared last week. Those of you, if you haven't been able to see the message, jump online and watch it. But um, Mark reminded us about Jesus' words in John where he says, my father is always at work. God, our father, is always at work. He's at work in these three workspaces. He's actually at work in all of our spaces, not just our work, but also our homes, our families, our neighbourhoods. He is at work, and whether that be through noticing and choosing to see where he's at work and respond to it in how we live and what we do. I think one of the things Mark said so beautifully last week was if we don't know where God is at, like if we can't see God at work in our workplace, it's not because he's not there, it's because we don't know. Does that make sense? He is there at work. If we can't see it or we don't know, it's because we don't know. And we've got to start knowing. <laughs> Spend some time with him asking, God, show me where you're at work. Because when we don't know, it's because we don't know. Not because he's not there. I love that reminder, Em. Okay, so we're saying that faith is part of how you live out your workspace. God is there at work already. How has faith, knowing who Jesus is and relying on him, how has that made a difference in your workplace? This time, can I start with you, Kel? How has it made a difference in your workplace? For me, it makes a difference in how I show up in authentic faith expressions. Um, so for me, Micah 6, 8 is a guiding verse and help when I carry that into the day, that's when I see a real difference. So... What does it look like to do justice today? What does it look like to love mercy today? What does it look like to walk humbly with God today? At all of our workplaces, anything can happen. Like every day looks different. People are different. Relationships are different. You kind of have to be able to respond to whatever's happening. So having that, that attitude of I'm just going to show up with who I am in an authentic way today and trust that God will use that, that really makes a difference. I love your posture, but I also love that you're showing up living out the scripture, right? You're talking about naming, this is God's word, but you're living it. It's not just a book you read for information, but allowing that to transform Kelly Bunyan and then take who God is creating you to be into that workplace. Love that, Kel. And what does it look like for you then? How has your faith made a real difference for your work? Mm. Over the last six months, seven months or so, um, I've been feeling a maternity leave um, cover position in the Riverland. Um, so I've been going up to the Riverland for three years, three and a half years now, uh, because they're chronically short on staff. And so they looked for some people from the city to help them out. And um, each year I've sort of reviewed and gone, oh, do I continue doing this? Um, and I've just felt when I prayed just to keep going, there's no reason not to at the moment. And at the end of last year, both the speech pathologist on the team went on maternity leave. So I was like, oh, maybe maybe God's got me here for a reason because um, it's just been a really cool opportunity to uh, just fill the gap um, and provide some sort of service to the community while there's a real lack of speech pathologists. 
so um, it's been uh, a challenge just with the volume of work to get through. Um, so my role has sort of been taking on referrals from all the schools and usually we might, you know, I, I have one school in Elizabeth that I go to, it's quite a big one, but here it's like 27 to 30, like smaller schools, some bigger schools, and like my emails were just piling up, my admin was piling up and I was going, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this all and stay mentally healthy and well. Um, so uh, after a week long visit in term one, um, Mike and Michelle both said on the Sunday that we can give our impossible to God. So I took a deep breath and I thought, okay, I can give this impossible to God. And I've really seen um, how he's helped me through the, um, the time it, giving me peace instead of um, worry or anxiety and um, helping me rest at night rather than my brain worrying about all the things I needed to do. Uh, and then also just doing one thing at a time. So there's the metaphor, um, how do you, would you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I sort of just sense those, that metaphor come to me in the week following um, the sermon. And um, I've really yeah, seen how God's helped me just to focus on one thing at a time, get through that thing, do the next thing, answer the next email, do the next referral, whatever it is. And yeah, I'm really grateful that he sustained me through this time. And um, we've got two, the two speech pathologists coming back in five weeks time, which I'm looking forward to. That is a good thing. But a beautiful reminder, Em, that you've spoken into that our God cares about our details. Like he's not just there, I want you to do this for me. He walks with us in everything and he knows our needs. He knows our details. This beautiful mystery, isn't it, that our God is he's all-powerful, all-knowing, he's holy, the King of kings, Lord and Lord, the creator of the universe, yet he cares about Emily Fawcett's day-to-day overwhelming sense and wanting to walk with you and give you peace. And I just, I love that reminder, an all-powerful yet deeply personal God that actually walks with us in every circumstance, whatever our workplace looks like. I love that reminder of he's there in it all. Keith, then for you, obviously you've got a, a different position being the boss of the business, running the business. How's your faith made a difference in how you run it being the boss? Yeah, so one of the, um, in, in, as a Christian businessman, I sort of turn the world's pyramid structure upside down and I'm actually there to serve my people, um, my staff. And so once a month I run a barbecue where I cook, I supply the meat, because that's my way of saying thank you for what you're doing for us as a business. Because they're caught up in our cause, they all hear that about that at the interviews. Um, so once a month I cook a barbecue. Um, one of the nice things about that is that I've already engaged them. They're in the lunchroom. They're all together. And I can say stuff. And they sort of have to listen. Um, <coughs> I've never been good at sharing my faith all my life. for good. It's um, good. Yeah. Um, but I've got a captive audience. So I do tend to tell them about special things going on, tell them about what's happened the last month. Um, but uh, it, it, this particular occasion happened to be the Thursday before Easter. And I was able to talk into the real meaning behind the weekend. They're about to have four days off. What is that actually all about? Um, and in doing that, I, I shared about the real story about Easter and then encouraged them to come to the services we have here at Cloby. Whether they came or not wasn't the issue. The issue was just sharing that and planting a seed and just having to think more about what this weekend's actually all about. Um, so that is a great opportunity to do that and it's comfortable for me. Yeah. I love that hearing that's the start of really kind of sharing... Um, that faith, not only does it make a difference in we can trust, Kelly knows she can go and, and, and trust, but you're then also wanting to share who Jesus is with those around you. And I love that reminder that, yeah, Jesus is meeting us where we're at. He knows our needs and he goes before us. Can I ask then for maybe also Emma and Kel to share a specific example of what does it meant, what does it look like to actually be courageous and bold enough to share your faith with someone in the workplace? Because let's be honest, there's times that's terrifying and overwhelming where do we even start some of us find it really natural others think oh, I don't want to talk about Jesus how do I do that what does it look like let's start with you Kel what does it look like can you tell us an example where you've been able to share your faith in the workplace sure I um I think of um, an incident with a student um, where a student had a, a massive blow up at school so um, very loud conflict swearing called me lots of names said lots of things um, and at uh, as it calmed down, he actually had to be asked to leave for the day. 
uh, and that he would need to come back tomorrow and, and have a conversation. And so when he came back in the next day, you know, into my office and sat down and was like, like fully expecting to be kicked out. So he was full of swagger and he was like, oh, you, what have you got to say to me kind of thing. Um, I love your interpretation. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's great. He'd be horrified if yeah, he had he heard would. that. <laughs> I'll have to tell him tomorrow <laughs> that I imitated him at church. Um, and he, you know, was very, you know, kind of had that barrier up between us, I guess. And as we talked and I asked, you know, some questions to gain some understanding, it kind of dawned on him that I wasn't kicking him out, that I was actually wanting to understand what had happened. I wanted him to understand why that we didn't love that behaviour in our community, um, but also wanted to ask him to then be a part of our community and, and calling him to something different, calling him to be part of what we were doing. Um, and he was taken aback by that and kind of recognised that there was a few different things. The staff had still said hello to him when he'd arrived at school and I'd still offered him a minty when he sat down at my desk like I do any student. Um, and so as we talked and, and he, he did agree that he, he wanted to continue in our community and so that was all good. But a couple of days later he came back and he said, Kelly, actually, I need to talk to you about that. Why didn't you kick me out? Like, why did you let me come back in? And I don't understand what's happened. And to be able to share with him and say, well, let, let me talk to you about Jesus. Let me talk to you about grace. Let me talk to you about the times I've been shown grace after I've mucked up. Um, you're actually a really important part of our community and, and we want, want you here. Um, and so now three years on from that incident, you know, he is, he's still part of our community. He's the one who encourages others in. And he's the one who now calls people to better, who says, you know, come on, that's not how we do things here. Uh, he'll, he'll help unload the dishwasher. You know, he'll do all the things. Um, and I, I know that's because he feels that he's part of what we're doing. Such a powerful story of you living differently and then caused him to go, hang on, why? What's that about? When we live differently, it is noticed. It's awesome. It's living it out, being genuine. All right. And what does it look like for you? Is there an example where you've been able to share your faith at work? Yeah, so in my Elizabeth team, um, we've got a whole range of different people, um, psychologists, social workers, um, teachers and admin staff. And one of our admin staff, actually a couple, um, I've, yeah, they've sort of been the ones that have been a little bit more open uh, or they share their life. And um, one of them, I think it was last year, her dad was quite unwell and in hospital and she was quite concerned for him. Um, and there's someone from church that I pray with on the phone about once a fortnight or so and we just pray about people in our workplaces or friends and family who don't know Jesus um, or who are going through difficult times. Um, and that's been really great just to keep, like remind me to keep praying um, so I don't either forget or give up um, when I don't see an answer. But So we prayed for um, this colleague's dad for a, a couple of months um, and just one day around the photocopy table, I just asked, how's your dad going? And she said that he'd been to the hospital for a review and his doctors had expected his health to decline or at best stay the same. She said his health had actually improved and they didn't know why. And I was just able to say, oh, my friend and I have been praying for your dad. And she was like, what? You've been praying? And um, she's not a Christian. And she was like, oh, I'm going to go tell my dad that. Um, so that was really special to be able to share and see God's, like, God's power at work um, in her dad's life. How wonderful. What I love about the stories we hear from you guys is whether it's like through Keith as the boss serving, living in a different way and intentionally sharing about Jesus, inviting people along, or whether it be Kelly living kindness and grace and then getting a question asked or am intentionally praying and when you get the opportunity being bold and saying we've been praying and pointing this person to Jesus actually he's done the good stuff I love the fact that you guys are living in a different way because when we live in a way that's different to culture when we live with grace and we faithfully care for people and we serve things actually stand out kindness grace caring for people showing compassion it makes a difference and I'm reminded even in how you guys have been living your faith, this beautiful reminder that it's meant to look different. Like each of these guys, they do it differently, right? Because we're all different people here with different work contexts and all of us, whether we're online or in the room, we have a different space. And the invitation is as we share our faith, to be free to be who God's made us to be, to be different and do it in different ways. But reminded last year when we had our series looking at Renew, 
And Mike talked us through this idea of if we're going to be people living our faith to pray, live and share. And so you've heard in their stories, there's elements of praying, there's elements of living differently, there's elements of sharing and speaking it out. I just want to invite us maybe to get excited <laughs> that we get to do that as well in our context, that in our way that God has made us, we get to pray, live and share. And that reminder that we do it to make Jesus look good. Yeah, we do it to point people to Jesus. I want to ask you guys then, these are great stories and I love hearing great stories, but let's be honest, sometimes work is really hard and there's challenges either in the workspace or just with how we're doing with faith and work. How does following Jesus make a difference when work is challenging and the challenges that we face? And I want to start with you. How does following Jesus make a difference in the challenge? Yeah, I think um, I work across two different teams, like I've said, the Elizabeth team and the Riverland team. And uh, inevitably, you know, we're all different, like Michelle just said, different personalities, different ways of communicating, different ways of working. And um, sometimes there are clashes. And I have experienced that over the last few years, um, someone that's in the level above me and just different way of going about work and, um, and yeah, it's been a bit challenging for me to um, still show love and grace to her. But um, instead of sort of harboring frustration or whatever, um, or talking badly about her to other people, which is easy to do, um, I've been challenged just to pray for her, um, sort of in my own time, just to, when I think about her, I pray for her, for the different things going on in her life and um, that we could work well together for a good outcome for the students. And um, yeah, I think God has worked in me, in my attitude and has helped me to um, have a warmth towards her um, so I can still be interested in her life and care about her. I don't have to be best friends with her, but um, I can still, uh, yeah, see the good parts about the way that she works that's different to me and appreciate those things um yeah so I think yeah I'm grateful that God helps us even in our challenges and often God grows us in our challenges doesn't he Keith what about you how does having a faith help the challenges of work I think I'm, if I think about that I think about the conflicts that occur um we employ people uh, so people always don't get along with people uh, and when that happens, the management team likes to uh, often go the jugular um, and I have to step in when they ask my advice, which is uh, not always asked but given anyway, um, because they need to understand that that's not the way you treat people, certainly not the way we treat people, it's not our culture. We actually extend grace. We have to listen and understand what actually happened and work with those people to resolve the problem. Um, so for me, it, you know, having that faith allows me to share. I, I have that uh, filter in me that they don't have, and that's the God filter, and that changes the way you treat people in conflict. It's beautiful language to give us. I have a filter, a God filter in how we tackle situations. Carol, what about for you? How does uh, your faith, how has it made a difference in challenge at work? It uh, makes me think of two areas. One is um, being part of a bigger, broader organisation and what that means in terms of politics and policies and having to do things that you don't always necessarily 100% agree with but it's required of you. Um, <clears throat> and I think of the times when I have, um, you know, had to, to deal with that and I've just kind of gone in and I'm full of bluster and I'm cross or angry or frustrated and, and that just kind of comes spilling out of me um, and I don't always get a good outcome. And I, I think of that against the times when even just for one second, I take one breath and just pause, just say, Jesus, be with me in this meeting. Just help me know what, when to speak and when to not speak, which can be the challenge for me. Um, you know, when is it time just to sit and just to listen? Um, and I find that really helpful. The other thing it, it really makes a difference in is in, in working in challenging and complex situations like lots of us do and like Em's sharing before, where you're working sometimes with young people who have like real challenges, real horrific stories and you're, you're part of their life for this tiny little bit but you also know that there's all this other stuff going on for them and it can be become really overwhelming and it can become really tiring and wearing um, but it helps me to know that my God is the God who makes seas into highways and my God is the one who has always been a saviour. He's been a saviour then and he's a saviour now and that I can, he's, what he's asking me to do is my peace and to show love and grace and to do everything I can, but to trust that he's the one who's doing the work here. 
I love that reminder to point us to him. He's the one at work. And interesting, I want to ask you in a moment to speak into this, Carol. One of the things as a, as a panel, as we were praying and preparing, all four of us have felt this reminder that it's God at work. We step into what he's already doing. We don't have to fix or control. Carol, can I ask you to speak into that a bit more? Because God put a real word on your heart around that. Share that with us. Thank you. I really felt um, a challenge about whether we need to flip things in our own minds. Are we pushing our Sunday faith into our work or is are we as people authentic followers of Jesus? And so wherever we are, whether that's work or the shops or at home or with our friends and family, that we are that person and that is the same person um, and that Keith and I were talking just before about the it's the authentic piece that makes the difference with people that... that People really connect with that. But we have to do that work first. What's my authentic relationship with Jesus in a way that I can really feel comfortable and calm in so that when I'm actually moving through through the world, that idea that everything is spiritual can really come to life, that I can connect because God is already there. God is already there at work redeeming the world to himself and I'm just moving through it and so I'm just connecting in. Such a a wonderful lens, uh, you know, to be able to put on it and recognise we're invited into what God's already doing. And this year we've been talking about deeper, going deeper in our faith. And if we genuinely go deeper, it can't help but impact who we are in all the spaces we're in. But it's about that rather than putting on, I've got to go share my faith today, letting that come out. All right, I want to ask you guys before we finish up to share one thing. If there's one thing about faith and work that you'd want to leave with us today, what would that one thing be? Em, can I start with you? Yeah, just um, that we don't always get it right when we try and share our faith with others. But that, um, yeah, I think if we're open to where God's at work and we um, are willing to join him, then he is faithful and he will bring about opportunities and he'll work in and through us. Thanks so much, Em. Keith, what's your one thing? For me, it's that there isn't a moment in our lives where God's not with us. Always with us. Kel, what's yours? Yeah, similar. God's there already. He already cares about us. He cares about our work, our people, our problems. Can I get you to put your hands together and thank these guys? Thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate the three of you. And what I love and value is, like I said, hearing from different contexts. So much diversity in who they are and what they do, but so much unity in around actually we're living out God's plan. God's already at work doing what he's doing, and he simply invites us to participate in that. This authentic, deep, transformed, lived faith, whole of life discipleship, not an outfit we put on from Monday to Friday, but Monday through to Sunday, day in, day out, wherever we find ourselves. I'd love to just pray for us because I recognise that we all go into different contexts in the next little, you know, while, in the week and wherever we find ourselves. I just invite us to stand as we respond in this time and just stand where we are. And one of the beautiful reminders is that as we live out our faith, we do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus clearly says that when he ascended into heaven, he left the Holy Spirit here for us, that every single one of us can be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. And so therefore, it's not us manufacturing, I've got to do this or be this, but it's just saying, Holy Spirit, come, fill me, transform me. And I just want to walk with you. I want to walk with the Holy Spirit everywhere I go, in whatever I do, in all the relationships, decisions, etc. And so I want to invite us in this moment, just maybe to close your eyes and picture your workspace, your place where you volunteer, the family relationships you have, the places you find yourself. And then to picture that the Holy Spirit is there, because He is. And I want to give us a chance just to respond, to ask that today we would be a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit, that we would be full to overflowing with the Holy Spirit because it's in His power that we do this. And so I want to invite you, if you want a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit today, if you want to ask, Holy Spirit, fill me, change me, do something new in me, just invite you to put your hands out in front of you, with your hands up just to say, I surrender, ask, Holy Spirit, fill me. Just a simple act of acknowledgement of saying, Holy Spirit, fill me, fill me. I want to do everything I do in your strength, not in my own. Maybe you just want to say these words, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you to fill us afresh. Fill us afresh this day. The living God presence in us. Holy Spirit, 
from our head to our toe. May our head, our heart, our soul be full afresh of you. May we know your strength. May we know your provision. May we know your power. May we know your grace and your goodness. Fill us to overflowing so that everywhere we go, you flow out of us. Today, this day afresh, fill us with your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your truth. Fill us with your joy. Thank you. We don't do this alone, but as we know you deeper, as you fill us up, as we walk wherever we find ourselves, may we flow over with your grace and your love and your goodness and kindness. May we look different to the culture around us because you, Lord God, are leading us. You are prompting us. You are filling us to overflowing and you are flowing out in all the spaces and places we find ourselves. And so today, Holy Spirit, we ask you would come afresh. We, your children, we receive from you. You're equipping, you're empowering, you're infilling. And we go into all the spaces you would have for us, led by you, sharing your love. Use us, we pray in your name. Amen.